Basic skills for the TOEFL IBT3 Speaking Cop Unit 1 Independent C. Listen and repeat. I saw the gadget on TV. It allowed you to cut vegetables in stylish ways. The gadget didn't look useful because I never want to cut my vegetables in stylish ways. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 1. My favorite gadget is my cell phone. It has so many handy features. It really helps me to organize my life. One of the features that are particularly useful is the daily planner. This lets me stay up to date with all the things that I need to do in my hectic life. My phone also helps me communicate with my friends in a variety of ways. I can text message, email, or call them. It gives me a lot of options for getting in contact with people. My cell phone is definitely my favorite gadget. Sample response 2. My favorite gadget is my TiVo box. TiVo is great because it lets me easily record a lot of things on TV. This way I never miss any of my favorite TV shows. I can do whatever I need to do and then watch them at a time that is more suitable for me. TiVo also has another feature that lets me fast forward through commercials and boring parts of a show. This way, I also save time because I don't have to waste my time watching tedious commercials that usually irritate me. My TiVo box is great! Integrated C. Listen and repeat. The university will close the campus hospital. It is doing this in order to build a new library. I think the conversation will be about the bad results of closing the hospital. B. Listen to the conversation and take notes. Did you see this notice? It was posted in the hospital. No, I didn't. What does it say? It says that the university wants to close the campus hospital. Really? That's strange. Why? They want to use the money to build a new library. Well, we really do need a new library. The current library is too small, and there aren't enough facilities. It would be wonderful to have a new one. Yes, but the hospital is much more important than the library. Just last week, I was there because I had a high fever. The doctors there were really kind, and they helped me recover quickly. You could also go to an off-campus hospital. There are some near the university. This one is so convenient, though. I live in the dorms, so it's easy to go there before or after classes. Also, since I don't have a car, it would be really difficult to get to the other hospital. I don't want to ride the bus when I'm sick. I guess not. I live in a house in the city, so it makes no difference to me. Well, I'm absolutely furious. I'm definitely going to this meeting on Friday. I want to keep the hospital open. It's really important to me and many other students. Will you come with me? I would, but it doesn't really affect me. Sure it does. If other students are sick, they can give their illnesses to you. You will be healthier if all students have easy access to a physician. Okay. I'll go with you. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The conversation is about closing the campus hospital so that they can use the money to build a new library. The man is very angry with the university for closing the campus hospital. He thinks the hospital is very important and convenient for students who live in the dorms. He also thinks that students will be healthier if they have access to a physician. He had to go to the hospital just last week, and they helped him recover quickly. He can't go to another hospital because he doesn't have a car, and he doesn't want to take the bus when he's sick. He will go to the meeting on Friday about the closing of the hospital to say what he thinks. Test Step 2 Listen to the conversation and take notes. Hi. Hi. Did you get a copy of the new medical center charges? What medical center charges? The medical center is free, isn't it? It isn't anymore. There have been some changes. The university didn't get enough money from the government, so they have started charging. 
Are they charging for everything? It says here you have to pay to see a doctor, and you will have to pay more for treatment and medicine. That's terrible. I just went to the doctor last week because I had a high fever. I got some medicine, but I will have to buy some more because I haven't completely recovered. Now I'll have to pay more money. I can't afford that. I don't think many students will be happy about this. Most students have very little money. No one is happy when the cost of the facilities goes up. I am sure the medical center can find the money from somewhere else. I don't think that charging the students is a good idea. I think many people will avoid going to the doctor to save money. If that's true, then many people will give their illnesses to other students. I don't like that. It's not easy to do well in your classes if you are sick. It makes it hard to study. Well, I'm going to go to the student union and complain. There must be something we can do about this. I hope so. If lots of students are furious, maybe they will take away the charges. That would be a good idea. Unit two. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. I usually go to McDonald's for fast food. I eat fast food about once a week. After eating fast food, I feel full, and sometimes I even feel a little bit sick. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response one. I don't think that fast food has a direct relationship to worsening health. I think that our lifestyle is much more important in determining our health. I think that people who eat a lot of fast food tend to have an unhealthy lifestyle. They usually don't exercise or do other things to take care of their body. However, I know some people who are very healthy and who often eat fast food. My brother is very slim but muscular. He loves eating hamburgers and French fries, but he also works out and is really healthy. Eating fast food doesn't always make your health worse. Sample response two: I think that fast food has made our health much worse. Fast food has very little nutritional value. It is loaded with salt, fat, and other preservatives that are not natural. These things make us fat and unhealthy. Fast food is dangerous for our health. Because it is really cheap and always available, there aren't many healthy and cheap fast food options, and many people are in a hurry or cannot afford healthier food, so they are forced to eat fast food because it is cheap and convenient. This makes them much less healthy. I think fast food is the main cause of our worsening health. Integrated. C. Listen and repeat. Roman and Greek sculptures were made from bronze and marble. Sculptures were made to show the greatness of a man or an event. I think this lecture will be about how Greeks and Romans made sculptures. B. Listen to the lecture and take notes. When people gather to talk about sculptures, ancient Greek and Roman sculptures often dominate the discussion. Greek and Roman sculptures are renowned throughout the world. They are some of the most intricate and elaborate works of art ever done. People travel from many places to see these beautifully preserved sculptures. The skill and attention to detail on them is amazing. Greek and Roman sculptures are very similar. The reason for this is that the Romans copied the Greek style and skills when they made their own sculptures. The Greeks first developed the skills. Through war and trade, these skills eventually influenced the Romans. The Romans soon became skilled sculptors as well. Sculptures were created for many reasons. Sometimes they were created to tell a story about a famous war or event. It is very hard to make a large sculpture, so they were made in different parts. The details and ornate design made them beautiful. Some of these sculptures were put on the walls of important buildings. Other sculptures were made for other reasons. Statues were displayed to honor a great man and his family. Important and powerful men had statues made of themselves. This was to show their importance and power. 
They were put in public places, such as in parks, squares, and bathhouses. Sculptures were made from both bronze and marble. Romans usually preferred bronze sculptures because they were much stronger, but marble statues were more easily sculpted. This made them look more realistic. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The lecture and passage were about ancient Greek and Roman sculptures. Ancient Greek and Roman sculptures are some of the most beautiful and intricate works of art ever made. People travel really far to see them. Greek and Roman sculptures are very similar. This is because the Romans copied the Greeks. The Greeks started it, and the Romans learned it through trade and war. Sculptures were made both to tell important war stories and events, as well as to honor great men. Sculptures were put on the sides of buildings, in public squares, and in parks. Sculptures were also made from bronze and marble. Bronze was stronger. Marble was more easily sculpted. Marble usually looked more realistic. The Romans, though, preferred bronze statues. Greek and Roman sculptures are great. Test. Step two. Listen to the lecture and take notes. Bronze and marble statues both have intricate and ornate details, but they are sculpted, valued, and preserved very differently. There are not many bronze Greek and Roman statues. This is because bronze was such an important metal. Bronze is a combination of the elements tin and copper. It is light and also very strong. It allows skilled sculptors to make beautiful sculptures. Bronze was also used to make deadly weapons. Having more bronze weapons could allow one army to dominate the other. As a result, bronze sculptures were often melted down during wars. They remade the bronze into weapons. This is why there aren't as many bronze statues remaining as there once were. Marble, though, is of no use in war. It is soft and weak. While it is bad for war, it is good for art. A thin piece of marble can break easily. The Venus de Milo is perhaps the most famous example of marble breaking. She lost her beautiful arms. Many other famous marble sculptures have a missing head. The head fell because the weight of the head was too much for the neck to support. This also explains why the feet and legs of marble statues are thicker than a normal person's. This is designed this way to make sure that the legs don't break and the body doesn't fall over. Marble is taken from the ground in large blocks. A skilled sculptor then sculpts the marble into a beautiful sculpture. Unit three. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. I had to decide what to eat for lunch. I wasn't happy with my decision because I didn't like the sandwich that I chose. I feel that this wasn't an important decision. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response one. The most important decision a person makes in their life is what their major will be in college. In many countries, your course of study will often lead you to your career. This will lead to your job for the next thirty to forty years. A wrong decision might make you miserable for a very long time. It is also vital to choose a topic that you are passionate about. You must be energetic and look forward to going to work. If not, you might be gloomy and dissatisfied later on in life. Choosing a major is the most important decision you can make. Sample response two. The most important decision you can make is where you live. Each person and city is unique. It is imperative to find a city that is a close match for your personality. A city that captivates you will attract other people with similar interests. This will make it far easier to make friends. A person who likes rural areas would not be happy in New York City or Tokyo. A very cosmopolitan person would not be happy in the countryside. Choosing an ideal place to live is the most important decision a person can make.
Integrated. B. Listen to the conversation. Then answer the questions. Hi, Lisa. You look stressed. What's the matter? Yes, I am. My grandmother is ill, but I have an exam. I don't know if I should postpone the exam or take it now. That's too bad. Is it serious? Yes. She has a breathing disorder, and the doctor needs to operate urgently. I have been studying so hard for my exams, but now I am worried that I will be too distracted to do well. C. Listen and repeat. The students are discussing if the girl should postpone her exams or not. Her grandmother is ill and needs an operation. She has studied hard for the exam, but is worried that she will be distracted and will not do well in her exam. A. Listen to the full conversation and take notes. Hi, Lisa. You look stressed. What's the matter? Yes, I am. My grandmother is ill, but I have an exam. I don't know if I should postpone the exam or take it now. That's too bad. Is it serious? Yes. She has a breathing disorder, and the doctor needs to operate urgently. I have been studying so hard for my exams, but now I am worried that I will be too distracted to do well. Won't your grandmother be unconscious during the operation? She won't be aware of you being there or not. You are prepared for the exam now, so maybe you should take it. Yes, she'll be unconscious, but I have a strong bond with my grandmother. She has taken care of me since I was young. I feel that I should be there with her. Then you will have to study for the exam again. You will have other exams to study for at the same time. You don't want to exert too much pressure on yourself. I know, but I've studied already. I have the knowledge for this exam. It should be easy to do later without too much studying. Do you know if the institute will grant or deny you a deferral? They said they will grant it. I checked with student services already. Well, if it's not imperative that you take it now, then maybe you could defer it. You seem too upset to sit the exam, but then you can't really do anything for her anyway. I know. It is so hard making a decision. Well. Good luck deciding, and let me know if I can do anything. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The conversation is about whether the student should postpone her exams or not. Her grandmother is sick and needs an operation. The student is worried that she will be too distracted to do well in her exam. She also feels that she should be there with her grandmother. Because her grandmother took care of her when she was young, she is not sure what the best option is, as she has studied hard and is prepared now. If she gets a deferral, she will have to study again and may exert too much pressure on herself. I think that she should postpone her exams. She is too upset and should be with her grandmother. Test. Step one. Listen to the conversation and take notes. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm not great to be honest. I have a sleeping disorder, and it's been really bad lately. I'm so sorry to hear that. Do you think that you'll be able to take your exams next week? Well, I have requested a deferral, and I'm waiting for a reply. But I'm not certain that I should postpone the exams either. How long have you been feeling so bad? I often have problems sleeping. Around exam times, I exert so much pressure on myself, and my condition is much worse. Last week, I collapsed in class and was unconscious for a couple of minutes. It sounds like you should postpone the exams for a while. Why are you not sure that you should? Well, I have always had this disorder. I have studied hard all semester and attended all my classes. If the institute grants me a deferral. I don't know if I will perform any better then either. Maybe I should take the exams and get them over with. Has the doctor given you medicine? Don't you think that will help you relax and be more prepared in a few months' time? That's why I've requested a deferral. Hopefully, the medicine will help me relax and concentrate. Also, a break from studying might be good for me right now. I guess you'll have to let the institute decide for you.
Yes, but I think it's imperative that I make my own decision too. I just don't know what's best for me. Unit 4 Independent C. Listen and repeat. I have a lot of knowledge about fashion. I got this knowledge by reading fashion magazines and going shopping often. I will continue to learn about this by designing my own clothes. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 1. I think that experience is far more important than knowledge. Any person can study and read a book. Not everyone, though, has been through the rigors of a trying event. Experience also proves that you can still succeed when things do not necessarily go as planned. Experience teaches you to avoid making the same mistake. As a student, I always preferred having teachers with experience. They always seemed to be in control. They also always knew how to teach something best. I would much rather be experienced than knowledgeable. Sample response 2 I think that experience and knowledge are both important. They go hand in hand. An experienced person without knowledge will be unsuccessful. My grandmother is extraordinarily experienced and wise, but she cannot advise me on computer matters. Knowledge without experience can also lead to failure. Recent college graduates are bursting with knowledge, but they often find it difficult to adjust to life at work. Knowledge and experience are two different things. Creating a balance of the two will lead to success in the future. Experience and knowledge are both very important. Integrated B. Listen to the first part of a lecture. Then, answer the questions. The brain is the most complex organ in the human body. It produces our every thought, action, memory, feeling, and experience. It contains more than 100 billion nerve cells. These cells are called neurons. Our brains form a million new connections every second of our lives. The pattern and strength of the connections changes constantly, and no two brains are alike. It is in these changing connections that memories are stored, habits learned, and personalities shaped. C. Listen and repeat. The lecture is mainly about the brain. The brain produces our thoughts, actions, memories, feelings, and experiences. I think the professor will talk about how the brain functions. A. Listen to the full lecture and take notes. The brain is the most complex organ in the human body. It produces our every thought, action, memory, feeling, and experience. It contains more than 100 billion nerve cells. These cells are called neurons. Our brains form a million new connections every second of our lives. The pattern and strength of the connections changes constantly, and no two brains are alike. It is in these changing connections that memories are stored, habits learned, and personalities shaped. The human brain consists of three separate parts. The first segment is in the lower section of the brain. This is sometimes called the brain stem. This section controls your instincts, reflexes, and basic physical functioning. When we are hungry or thirsty, the instincts of this part of the brain will let us know. This causes us to eat or drink. The second section is commonly known as the midbrain. It lies directly above the brainstem. This part of the brain is involved in many of our feelings and emotions. It allows us to sense pain and pleasure. It also stores patterns of movement and repeated tasks. The third section takes up about 80% of the total brain. It is sometimes called the neocortex, or new brain. This part of the brain allows you to think, set goals, and solve problems. The new brain is still developing until about the age of 21. Getting the second and third sections of the brain to work together in harmony 
is important for maturing into adulthood. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The lecture is about the brain. The brain produces our every thought, action, memory, feeling, and experience. The brain forms connections which store memories and habits and shape our personalities. The pattern of connections in the brain changes constantly, and no two brains are alike. The human brain has three segments. The first segment is the brain stem. It controls instincts, reflexes, basic functioning, and tells us when we are hungry or thirsty. The midbrain allows us to sense pain and pleasure. It also stores patterns of movement and repeated tasks. The neocortex, or new brain, allows us to think, set goals, and solve problems. This part is still maturing until the age of 21. The midbrain and the new brain must work together to mature into adulthood. The brain is very complex and is responsible for every thought, feeling, or action that we produce. Test. Step 1. Listen to the lecture and take notes. When you hear the term concussion, you think brain damage, right? Concussions are actually very common. They are also the least serious form of traumatic brain injury. The brain is made of soft tissue and is cushioned by spinal fluid. It is protected by the hard skull. When a person receives a brain injury, the brain gets tossed around. It may even bang against the skull. This can cause bruising, blood vessels to tear, and injury to the nerves. Concussions are commonly caused through sports injuries. If you play sports such as football, boxing, and hockey, a concussion is more likely. Also, men have a higher potential for concussions than women. Some symptoms include dizziness, nausea, and loss of memory. You may even lose consciousness. In some cases, it is not always obvious. Sometimes, players return to a game when they shouldn't. This can be serious. If the brain receives another injury, there may be long term damage. The length of time it takes to recover from a head injury differs. It depends on how severe the injury is. Diagnosing a concussion is usually straightforward. Your doctor may ask you what seem like silly questions, such as, What is your name? These questions are routine. The doctor also checks your reflexes. If the injury appears to be more serious, a brain scan is often performed. This is like having your brain x rayed. A scan is not always necessary, but will quickly tell you if there is serious damage. If you play sports, don't be alarmed. Wear protective headgear and use your head. Unit 5 Independent C. Listen and repeat. My hobby is playing the saxophone in a band. I spend almost 30 hours a week practicing with my band. I do my hobby in an old building near my friend's house. We can be really loud there. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 1. I often go to the movie theater. I go there because I love watching innovative special effects. I love seeing all the incredible explosions. And all the characters come to life. I love to see how the special effects have improved. I also go to the movie theater because I can hang out with lots of my classmates. We get together at the theater, talk for a while, and then go watch a movie. Afterward, we go for a coffee and criticize or compliment the movie we just saw. It's a lot of fun. I love going to the movie theater. Sample response 2. I often go to my grandma's nursing home. My grandma is very old, and it is hard for her to leave the nursing home, so I try to go there and visit with her as often as I can. My grandma and I have a lot in common. We always discuss politics and the articles in that day's newspaper. I also go there to volunteer on the weekends. Some of the people have family who live far away. 
They're lonely and want to talk to other people. I enjoy it, and I think it makes them feel better too. Integrated. C. Listen and repeat. The announcement says that the dorm is changing its quiet hours because many residents are unhappy with the current quiet hours. I think the conversation will be about how the students feel about the new hours. B. Listen to the conversation and take notes. Hi, do you want to come to my party on Thursday night? It's going to be a lot of fun. I have a test on Friday, so I can't. Maybe I'll come next time. Just make sure your party ends early enough. Early enough for what? This building's quiet hours have changed. Now we all have to reduce noise starting at 10 p.m. instead of 11 p.m. Also, the quiet hours end at 6 a.m. and not 5 a.m. Really? I wonder why they changed. I guess a lot of social events will be victim to these new hours. It's going to be difficult to be quiet so early. There are definitely pros and cons to the new system, but I'm optimistic about it. I think that these changes will create a more stable environment for studying. I have a lot of trouble studying when other people are making a lot of noise. Don't you think there should be some flexibility, though? 10 p.m. seems really rigid. They should have different hours on weekends. I don't think so. I think there are a lot of people who have part time jobs, sports, and other things early on the weekend. Some students even have classes. I know that I like to get a good night's sleep before I go to work on Saturday. I'm sure others feel this way too. People can still have parties and socialize. They just need to be aware of the other residents and respect their rights. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The woman is optimistic about the new quiet hours. She thinks there are pros and cons to the new policy, but she is mainly optimistic, as she believes it will enable a better environment for studying. At the moment, she has trouble studying when it's noisy. She also likes to sleep well before she goes to work on Saturdays and knows that other students have jobs and do sports at the weekend. So she also likes that the quiet hours happen on the weekends too. She thinks the other students can still have fun, they just need to be aware of others and be respectful to those who need the quiet time to study or sleep. Test. Step 2. Listen to the conversation and take notes. Did you just post this notice on the door? Yes, I did. It's about the dorm guest policy. There have been a lot of complaints, so the guest hours are changing. Are they becoming longer or shorter? Guests will be allowed in the dorm for a shorter time. They will have to leave earlier in the evening in order to allow students to have peace and quiet. That's a great idea. I know that sometimes it can get really noisy around here. I have had many assignments fall victim to noise in the halls. It makes it really hard to concentrate when there are so many people around. Well, some students will probably complain about the new policy. They feel that there should be more flexibility in our policy. However, I'm optimistic that the overall response to the new policy will be good. There are definitely pros and cons to a policy like this, but I'm really happy about this. I think that it is going to make people more aware and more respectful of their neighbors. Yes, and it will reduce the number of arguments among the residents. The rules are very strict, and there will be no exceptions. This means that everyone has to follow the same rules, and everyone will be treated equally. That's great. It will bring a lot of peace to our living environment, and I think the majority of the students will be happier. Unit 6. Independent. C. Listen and repeat. I go shopping at Target most often. I go shopping there because it is cheap, and they have both clothes and food. I prefer shopping at big stores because they have a lot of things for me to look at and buy. F. Listen to the sample responses and complete the outlines. Sample response 
I think that it is better to shop at an independent store. This type of store is owned and operated by locals. You are supporting your own community by buying there. This makes sure that the money stays in your community. You are also helping the people who work at the store. This is done by helping to pay their salary and increasing their standard of living. A big chain store will often pay its employees a much lower salary. Shopping at the independent stores helps to make your community stronger. This is because you are directly helping people in your community more. Sample response two. I don't think that it matters where you choose to shop. The most important thing is to choose the place that gives you the best bargains. Everyone works hard for his or her money. They should spend their hard-earned money wisely. If an independent store gives the best deal, then you should shop there. Every store is competing for your business, so it is very important that they do everything that they can to give you the best deals. In the end, the more money you have in your pocket, the happier you are going to be. Integrated. C. Listen and repeat. Refugees have to flee because there is often fighting in their homeland, and they must leave or they might be killed. They face many problems in the new countries, like learning new languages, currencies, customs, and adjusting to a new way of life. I think this lecture will be about how refugees adapt to their new homeland. B. Listen to the lecture and take notes. African refugees have become more common in Western countries. Some parts of Africa had corrupt regimes that were at war. There also wasn't enough food. This caused people to flee their homeland. They are often minorities. They feel they must leave or be killed, so they become refugees. They hope to start a new life in a new land. Many refugees end up in Europe and America. Living in these places are very different from living in Africa. They face many problems that are inherent in a new country. The first and biggest problem for them is often communication. Many cannot speak the local language. They overcome this by taking intensive classes. They study hard because they must. They also find a big change in weather. These countries are much colder than Africa. Some places get a lot of snow in the winter. Many of the refugees have never seen snow. They go and buy jackets and warm blankets. Often they adjust well to the new weather. Organizations also help refugees. They help them to find jobs. There are also other African refugees in their city. They help each other adjust to the many cultural variables of life in a new land. They may learn to drive or to shop at the supermarket. They even start to root for the local sports teams. Eventually, they feel as comfortable in their new home as they did in their old one. But they always remember their homeland. D. Listen to the sample response and complete the outline. The lecture and the passage were about how refugees adjust to life in a new homeland. They have to leave because their governments are corrupt and at war. Their homelands don't have enough food, or they are worried that they will be killed. They face many problems in their new homes. They often cannot communicate. The weather also is a big change for them, but they adjust. There are other refugees and organizations that help them to adjust. They help them to find jobs and other useful things. They help to teach them important skills like driving and shopping at the store. In the end, they learn to drive and shop at the supermarket just like anyone else. Test. Step two. Listen to the lecture and take notes. In 2003, war started in Iraq. There was a regime in power that many felt was corrupt and evil. This regime was defeated, but intensive fighting continued after the regime was defeated. This fighting made Iraqis flee their homes. Millions of people left. Fortunately, the neighboring countries allowed Iraqis in. The Iraqi minority in all these countries is huge. They come to their new cities with their own culture. 
Iraqis speak a slightly different form of Arabic than their neighbors. Many Iraqis also have a different religion. They also have their own food. They bring these things into their new country. They do things that make their new home feel more comfortable. Parts of Damascus are now called Little Baghdad. This area feels like Iraq. Iraqis do their best to adjust to their new homes. They start Iraqi restaurants. They start their own mosques so they can pray. They live in groups. This lets them communicate easily. Iraqis remember their homeland best through the theater. The Iraqis have a long history of theater. Iraqi actors and actresses perform plays. They show the problems inherent in their new lives. The plays are often funny. The end of the play usually has a surprise. They often end sadly. They enjoy these plays. This is because they share many of the same feelings. Review one. Integrated one. Step two. Listen to the conversation and take notes. Did you hear that they lowered the grade requirements for studying abroad? Yeah, I did. You seem excited. Well, I am. This means that I can go study next summer in Austria. I can finally go and study music in Vienna. I've been working so hard to try to get my grades high enough. Sadly, I haven't been able to do it. I was starting to worry that I would never get the opportunity to go. Well, I am really happy for you. There are pros and cons of doing this, though. Not necessarily. Doing this will give opportunities for a lot more students to go abroad and experience different cultures. They will gain knowledge, become more cosmopolitan, or maybe even find something they want to study further. You're right, but I think an opportunity like this should be a reward for years of hard work. It shouldn't be something that anyone can do. It is imperative for the school to grant great opportunities like studying abroad to people who really work hard for this. I see your point, but it is such a great opportunity that the school shouldn't deny any student that wants to do it. Maybe I'm in the minority on this, but I think the levels were good as they were. But don't get me wrong; I'm really happy for you. Thanks. Let's go to the office and get some information on Austria. Sounds good. Integrated two. Step one. Listen to the lecture and take notes. Many people think the mouth is only for eating, but there are many parts to the mouth. The tongue and teeth are important for communication. It is important to take good care of your mouth. Proper treatment and care will ensure you have a healthy mouth. The first thing most people do when they meet someone new is give a warm smile. A nice smile can captivate someone. Most people's reflexes will have them smile back. A warm smile lets people relax. It can enable the start of a good relationship. A smile uses every part of the mouth. The tongue is extraordinarily important for communication. The tongue is very muscular. It is one of the strongest muscles in the body. It can move in many different directions. These intricate movements help to make speech possible. The tongue also helps to control the air. The teeth are also imperative to communication. The teeth are important in determining how much air passes through the mouth. They also enable us to make sounds like th. These sounds are really important in English. Communication is so important to how we live. Therefore, physicians always tell us to take care of our mouths. If we fail to preserve our teeth, we can lose them. This makes communication very difficult. It also makes it harder to give a beautiful smile. Even though it is sometimes tedious, it is imperative to brush and floss our teeth every day.